Okay, so welcome to the Jamovi workshop. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the KPS for allowing me to do the workshop. So let's kind of just jump right into it. So kind of a little bit of the outline of what we're going to be doing today is we're going to set up Jamovi. I'm going to talk a little bit about what Jamovi is, things like that. Uh, we'll talk about importing the Pokemon data and creating variables with it. We'll also run some tests. The thing I want to make clear is that this workshop is kind of for beginners. It's not really going to dive that much into uh, linear regression, chi-squares, or anything like that. So if you're hoping to have those, maybe the KPS can run a future Jamovi workshop that kind of delves into more of the more complicated things I just don't want to talk about right now. And then finally, we'll finish with some questions or wrap up or whatever we have time for at the end. So of course, right now, you should hopefully have downloaded Jamovi. Uh, disclaimer, I don't have a Mac. So I don't know if there's any differences between the Mac or this, but this is typically what we have when you use a Windows. There's two formats. There's the solid format and the current format. So what solid is in this terms is it just defines it as like it's reliable. It's been tested and it's good to go. I always recommend that people stick with the solid just because that's the most common one and they don't really change it over all that much. Uh, and then the current one is where they throw in more experimental stuff. Uh, which is really good, but uh, like anything, there's always bugs. So try to save the solid. But if you have current, that's fine. Just know that I'm using solid. So if there's any differences, there's going to be some, and we'll we'll work on it. But we'll see what happens, right? So what is Jamovi? So Jamovi, I like to call it, is kind of a hybrid of SPSS and R. What does that mean? Is it kind of shares properties of both. With SPSS, as we know, it's a Dropbox kind of system where you click on stuff, you access it, and it's kind of nice. And how Jamovi takes that is it takes a Dropbox, but makes it a lot simpler to work with. With R, on the other hand, it's very code heavy. If you're really good at code, great for you. I am not that great. And Jamovi does have some coding features that we're going to have to work with. But I promise you, it's not going to be as heavy as R. So those are kind of setting up what Jamovi is. I like it, but literally when we use Jamovi, how we should see it as is we see it as something that works together with the other ones. What I mean by that is that each statistical software kind of supports or provides us with other things. So as we know with R, it's very flexible and you can basically do anything you want with it. It's fantastic, but it does have a hard learning curve. SPSS, on the other hand, it's, well, expensive, and it can only do so much. And Jamovi is kind of a little bit of both, though there is limitations on it. Uh, what I did put in the comments, or I guess the chat, shall we say, is a book. Uh, Quantlin purchased uh, this book on Jamovi for psychology students, which really gets into detail about what each test does, which I'm not going to get into. I'll go over the tests but I'm not going to get into detail as this author does. And he just does a great job making everything super simple, and you don't have to worry about actually understanding it all that much because he literally goes step by step defining what everything means so you know really well. And it's only about like 300 pages compared to some stats books that can go up to 1,000. So, hey, works pretty well. Okay, so let's kind of jump into what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is there should be some data on the side. It should be a CSV, which has Pokemon data. I think it's first and second generation Pokemon. And we're, we're researchers, and we finally gathered all that data. You know, Professor Oak, you suck because we finally got all the data, and that's what we're going to look at. So I'm going to set up Jamovi, so feel free to open your Jamovi right now. I'm going to stop sharing for a second and then switch over to Jamovi. Huzzah! Uh. <laughs> See if I can find it. It's apparently not wanting to show up for me. Technical issues. That's OK. Give me a second and I'll fix it. We're just going to share my screen. Can people see that? Fantastic. OK, so this is what Jamovi kind of looks like. It doesn't seem like a lot, and that's, that's OK, because it's all kind of hidden in there. 
So on our left side here, this is where you put in your data, your variables, things like that. If you've used SPS before, SPSS, sorry, uh, you know that there'd be like a data view. On Jamovi, it just kind of puts it right together. And so it's right here. That's all it is. And we'll kind of get into that in a minute here. And on the right side, the one thing I really, really dislike about SPSS is that when you run your data, it always comes out in a separate window, which is really ridiculous. For Jamovi here, it doesn't do that. It literally just puts it right next to it so you can work with your data as you're inputting data. So it's kind of useful. Uh, let's kind of just look at some things we got going up here on the top. Expiration, uh, this is where you kind of do descriptive stuff. T-test, ANOVA, regression, frequency, factors. Again, these are just tests we're going to run. We're going to deal with these four today. Uh, and then on the top right here-ish, models, modules, sorry. Uh, if we click on Jamovi uh, library here, what you can see is it has a bunch of packages. And this is where it kind of gets the same features as R, because in R, you can download a lot of packages to kind of help support your coding, depending on what you want to do. So for example, you can run R code in here. You can run some other things. The one thing I will point out when you're going through here, there's some really nice ones. Uh, you can do Bayesian theory here if you want. Um, if it's not at like 1.1, like out as it should be, if it's still in alpha, leave it alone for a little bit just because sometimes they can cause some serious issues with uh, with your statistical software. So just kind of look. This one looks fine. This one looks fine, but just a little heads up. If we click on the data here, we can see a bunch of common things we were most likely used to. So paste, copy, cut, edit stuff, setup, which we'll talk a little bit about more in a couple minutes here, compute, transform, and just some add and delete, and then filters, which kind of looks like a coffee filter, which is kind of funny. This kind of sets up Jamovi. We haven't done a whole lot yet, but this is what you have to work with. When we open up the hamburger looking thing, I call it, but the three dashes, if you want to call it that too, it's going to open us all these other things. So new, open, import, things were generally common, that's common along most of the statistics. Let's kind of open our Pokemon data. So we're going to click on import. And then what's going to happen is it's going to open, like, of course, documents for me. At the bottom here, you can see data files. So just click on it just to get a view of what kind of data it can take. So you can see CSVs, that's what we're going to go for. But it takes a lot of things. It takes SP. CSS files, R, JASP, SAS, any of those. We'll just keep it on data files. But all I wanted to point is that this takes a lot of uh, information from a lot of uh, different statistical softwares. So find your data. I'm going to browse. Don't worry about mine says 151. That's because I was messing around with the earlier first gen to see what the best Pokemon was. But we'll just go with Pokemon and just open it up. And as you can see, it literally takes a couple and boom, we have our data in there. Hopefully everyone is doing fine so far. I don't hear anyone talking, so that's good. OK. And of course, if you have any questions, just put your hands up. And if Sydney, if you're nice enough, you can just read them off to me. That'd be great. Or if someone's stuck, feel free to do the same thing. Be like, Brandon, slow down. I don't understand what you're doing. That's also fine. OK, so we'll talk about starting or making uh, variables. So we imported our variables over here, as you can see. We're going to leave those alone for now, just so we can kind of talk a little bit more about actually creating variables, because you know, with SPSS and Excel, we kind of like doing that. You have two options to start making uh, a variable. Obviously, it starts with ABC, which we're going to start with today. You can either double click on it, and it opens up here. And of course, if you want to close it, you just push the Hide button. Or you can click on Setup. This is what the Setup button does. Whatever you feel like doing, I don't really like clicking the Setup button. I'd rather just double click. What's funny is if you try to double click to close it, it doesn't work. So you have to click the Hide button every time. So I'm kind of like, why isn't this a function yet? But you'll get to it. So we'll click on this. This here allows us to name our variable. Let's name it Happy. Why? Because I don't know. It's, it's not raining anymore. I feel happy. The description here kind of gives us what what it does, right? So it could be maybe we're using a scale and it's like, I feel great right now, exclamation mark. 
So the measure type is going to seem very, you're going to know what it is, right? There's nominal, which is like categorical, ordinal, continuous, and ID. Now, nominal is like categorical, like male, female, whatever you want to put it as, yes, no. Ordinal, it's, it's kind of like a continuous, or not continuous, sorry, it's like ranked kind of in a way of um, Likert scale, one to five. And then continuous is, of course, continuous variables that we're used to. Um, and then ID, just it's another way of like, as you can see here in our data, each Pokemon has a name associated to it. So Bulbasaur is number one, but its ID is just Bulbasaur. We're not going to use those names. It's just a way for us to identify to see which Pokemon might be the best for us. So what we're going to do for our data here is we're going to move it to ordinal. Now with data type, you have a few choices. Um, it also has a auto set. What that means is if you go down here to happy and you put in like blue and you push enter, it instantly determines that it's a text and therefore it adds it as a text data type. What we're going to do is we're going to not do data or we're not going to do text or decimal integer. And then missing values is where you can put a number to associate those missing values. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, generally, you can just, keep, as we find out in most statistics, is people generally don't do all of it, so you can incorporate a number to get rid of it. But that's okay. Uh, it's just like SPSS. So we did that. So let's set this up. So our data variable is called happy, and maybe this is just the scale it's called, maybe the happy scale. We can You can name it whatever you want. Let's just keep it simple. This is what it's kind of, the item is asking, I feel great right now. Ordinal, integer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Like a Likert scale, right? One to five. Now, if we come back up here, we can see that we can click on this. We can change this to whatever we want. So we can say that this means agree, which is what we're normally used to. We can go down to two, change this to somewhat agree. And then you can just push enter if you want, or you can just click down the next one. We can say neither. Somewhat, oops, I got a spell right, guys. Disagree. And then finally, we can put uh, disagree. And if I click on there and then click away, you can see that the names have now, the numbers have been changed to what the coding numbers have been. So for example, one is now agree. So if we go down here and click a one, it's became agree, click a three, becomes neither. This is kind of how you set up your data if you're using an ordinal scale. Uh, continuous, it's obviously just numbers, so you won't get the levels. So for example, if we switch this to continuous, there's no levels and therefore you can't name them, which makes sense. I mean, how would you like it if you had to name every, every number? It would kind of take a while. So we can go to ordinal. You can also change it to normal. It kind of does the same thing. There's just some issues when you set it as nominal data, but you can do it that way. Just for the for our purposes, we'll set it as ordinal. Uh, the one thing I do want to say, though, is make sure you select what you're doing. Uh, there is some debate about if ordinal from 1 to 5 is actually continuous or not, but for this purpose, we're just going to say it is ordinal. And so that's how you set up your kind of our first variable. Now to kind of jump a little bit further in, because a lot of us, you know, we're researchers who want to know, as you can see here, that maybe this has to be reverse scoring because, you know, we want them to rate high that I'm happy right now, but it's a one to five. So we need to reverse score it. And this is where transform comes in. And, and this is where we're going to use it. So what we're going to do is make sure, well, we can close this if we want. We can click on this, click on transform, and then we have this set up. Is everyone here right now? Sorry, just checking something. So happy to, what happens is it creates another variable as we know in like SPSS, but let's take happy, and I don't like happy to, that makes me feel sad. Let's just make it happy R. It just works with us and we can add a description if we want, that's fine. Now the source variable here, is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's what you select as your variable. You can select different things if you want, but of course we're gonna stay with happy because we're gonna kind of change it around. Next, under using transform, we're gonna click here. Currently we have none, but we're going to create a new transform variable. 
click on that. It's going to open this weird window. Oh, it looks weird. That's fine. What we're going to do is we can name this something if we want. The thing I really enjoy about Jamovi when it comes to transforming or doing things like that is you can save save the kind of coding that you want it to be. So for example, if we kind of make this 1 to 5 R, just meaning for reverse or something like that, uh, if we save this, we can then use the same transform variable over and over again. And I'll show you what that means right after we kind of complete this. Description, we all know what description is. This is where you can add like underscore log or something like that to it. Don't worry too much about it. Now we're going to click on, well, we don't have to click on this, but I'm going to show it anyways. We can go to add recode conditions, and this is kind of where the coding gets the aspect of R gets in here. So for example, equals. So all it's saying is if source equals, and let's say one, we can use uh, quotation marks because you always have to put them in quotation marks or else it thinks it's like a variable. So quotation marks, let's say blue. Again, we're just screwing around here. If not, we'll say that quotation marks red, and we'll capitalize it, red, close quotation marks. So you can see here that what I did is I just quickly recoded it. So if it was a one, it got assigned blue. Everywhere else, it got assigned red. And you can do a lot of things. You can say like, yeah, you know, either greater than or equals to oops, two, three. We can do it like that. So this means greater than, and this means equal to. It's a little bit of coding talk. It kind of just changes this about, right? So now this red here, someone agree, has changed a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to reverse scoring. So we can just delete this. We don't want this. We don't want this. And if you just kind of do that, it messes around. How to reverse score something is pretty simple. If your scale or your Likert scale is 1 to 5, just push 6 minus dollar sign. So the dollar sign just means like to this. To this. And then we just put in uh, source. And then just push Enter. And as you can see here, it instantly recoded everything for me. So now our five is a one, and our five, or our one is a five, and our five is a one. Does that make sense? So, for example, if we did this to, let's see, it was a one to seven scale, we can just make this eight and push enter. Now, of course, this doesn't really work because our data isn't that. But if we change this back, boom, shakalaka, we're fine. After we do this, we can close this, and it's it's done. It's already done. But if we go here, so let's go to B. Let's, I don't know, make it happy 2. Just make another ordinal scale. And we just put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 once again. And we, of course, can rename it if we want. I'm just going to quickly go agree, and we're just going to make the little bottom one. Disagree, just quickly. As you can see, it's done that. Now if we go back, click on this, transform. So we're now on happy two. Of course it doesn't. There we go, happy two. We can click on 15R, and it instantly recodes it for us. So as I was saying before, it saves this variable for us, so we don't have to worry about it. So if you always want, if you have a bunch of scales that need to be reversed, you can just pop in this and it instantly rescores it for you and you don't have to worry about it. So it's kind of useful. I like it. If we make a boo boo and I don't want any of these, I can simply right click and just go down to delete variable. And then yes, please delete that. And then delete variable again. Does that make sense with recoding? Any confusion, anything you guys want to add on before I move on to computing variables? It's pretty straightforward. You just put the number minus at source, and it reverse scores for you. I'm not hearing any questions, so we're going to kind of move on to the next thing then. So we did transform, and of course setup just lets us set up, but we haven't used compute, and compute is one of the most common things to use. So what we're going to do, so we're going to click on Compute. Boom. Let's name this Overall 
attack power. Now what we're going to do is, you see the function button here? We're going to click on this, and it's going to be very similar to SPSS. And please note, I'm going to be referring to SPSS a lot more just because that's what we generally work with. Uh, work with meaning that most second years are generally familiar with, Jamo or with uh, SPSS. So you can see here that it has a bunch of things we can work with. The one we want is we want mean. So what you do is you double click on mean. Once you do that, we can then select our variables. So overall attack power, I always think of maybe attack. So just double click on attack. Then once you do that, add a comma, because we need to kind of separate it. And we can do whether well, special attack, let's add special attack, and then we'll do comma again, and then let's add speed. What we do is we push enter, and as you can see here, right off the bat, it gives us our numbers. And if you're familiar with SPSS, anytime you want to do any of this, it has to go to the output window. It just does it right off the bat. And so this is how we compute overall attack power and stuff like that. We can also do another one if we want. We can just go compute. And we can name, I don't know, overall defense. No, I think I spelled that wrong. Defense. I always can't remember if it's the British or the American version with that. Uh, anyways, and so what we do next is, again, we click on the function. We move all the way down to mean, click on it, double click, and it pops it up there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add HP, comma, defense, comma, and let's add special defense. And then we once again finish it off with enter. And there we go. That's how you kind of compute. There is other functions we can use. I'm just going to use mean because that's the one we kind of use more of. For example, you have sum. Uh, there's some other ones you don't have to worry about. The last one we can kind of talk about is Z scores. Uh, it's always nice to kind of see where things are going on. So once again, we're going to push. Well, we're going to close this. We're going to push compute. What we're going to do is we're going to go down to function and we're going to click on the Z or Z, however you pronounce it. Well, you're just going to push this squiggly line thing. Click on it. And so underneath, it tells you what the conditions need to be. So the other one means that like number one, number two, which is just basically the variables we put in. But you can also put numbers. For this one, you need to put in a variable. And that's fine. Let's take defense. So double click on defense. And that's it. This is how you get your Z scores. Oh, apparently it doesn't want to work for me. No. What did I do wrong? was supposed to do that. No, oh, yours worked? Yeah. Oh my god, now he just hates my guts. Ah, there we go. Woo! I don't know what the hell happened there. Oh man, what a heart attack. You never know when technology just fails you instantly. Uh, Heads up, I have had some issues with Jamovi, so <laughs> if it shuts down, yeah, it's just one of the things. Anyways, so we can see that this is our Z scores for defense. Uh, of course, we didn't name it. If you want to assign a name, feel free. We're just kind of showing you how you can do Z scores. If a lot of you are familiar with uh, with SPSS, is to try to get your Z score is a little bit of a trick. You have to like do a bunch of stuff, and it's really annoying. Jamovi, it's that simple. You literally compute. Z score, put in your variable, and this is what you get. And we can kind of look around and see what's going on. There's a lot of Pokemon. And you can see, well, that person has high Z score. But this is generally how we set up most of the things. Uh, there is the filter one I want to talk about, but we'll get into that when we get into ANOVAs, just because it's a little messy, but we need to use it to kind of work with our data. So I'm going to start moving on to how to run a bunch of tests. Is there any questions about variables, deleting anything, any of that confusion? This is your time to speak up before I move on. OK, no one's saying anything, so I think we're golden. OK, so we, as I said, we worked on setup. We figured out how to compute some things. We figured out how to transform variables either being uh, conditioning them into what we want. Now let's kind of move on to actually analyzing our data. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to go into exploration and we're going to click on descriptives. Now what the descriptives, as you can see here, this is the one thing I freaking love about Jamovi is that it works with you. So what I mean by that is if we throw in overall attack power real quickly, we can see some of these, we can see the stats right away. We don't have to go into a separate output, but say for example, I'm like, oh crap, I didn't want overall attack power. I wanted overall defense. That's the way to go. And I move it over, it instantly adjusts with it. Now, this can be a double-edged sword because if you're running a bit later, such as like a repeated Nanova, and you accidentally take something out, it does kind of work with you. So you have to put it all back in. But it's really nice because you don't need this whole giant map of results. So we'll put this back out. Uh, hmm, which one should we do? Uh, let's just do defense. Now, the one thing I do want to point out here and this is a good example of it, is if we do not assign the right measure type, certain things won't happen. For example, we can't get a frequency table. If we click on it, nothing's going to pop up. But if we, for example, put HP, which HP would not, but if we put HP in there, it would show up just because it has been categorized as nominal, nominal data. So you can see here, like, level 10s, one count. doesn't really make sense. It just gets a little messy. So that's why it kind of depends on like what you assign to that. Again, no table there, totally fine. So this is what's going to how it works, right? So we have our variables here. We can bring it over by dragging it, double clicking it, as you just saw. Funny enough is you can't double click it over here. You have to like just normal click it, which is fine. But you can double tap it to bring it back. We can also split by. So what that means is obviously what the name says, we can split it by stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right to the bottom where it says captive. We're going to drag it over or click it over if you want. And it can split it by captive or wild. So we'll kind of look at this in a minute. When we open statistics here, so just tap that open. We have a bunch of useful things we can add. So for example, we can add mode, sum, excuse me. Uh, if you want, we can also just, again, randomly get rid of it if you're like, well, what the hell? Why do I want mode for? Uh, standard deviations, variance, standard error. We can also include uh, normality if we want. And normality looks like crap. Oh, well, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Uh, distribution, you can look at these. So it gets a little messy if you start clicking on everything, but it's kind of fun to kind of look at things like that. Uh, but that kind of gives you the options of what you can select if you're curious or if you don't want it. But if we look at our table here, it's just this is as simple as it can be. You can see the means between both groups, median, mean, maximum. Now, the other fun part to do here is we click on plots, obviously plots meaning kind of graphs we can do. We can do a histogram. Everyone's pretty familiar with histogram. So we look down here and you can kind of see where the data is kind of leading. We've got some outliers that are just massive defense. You can also click on density. As I can say, this looks way better than Jamovi or uh, SPSS, sorry. Uh, there's also QQ plots. Uh, some of you might not know what a QQ plot is, but it takes like the residual 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 uh, numbers. Uh, yeah, residual, thank you. Standardized residuals and kind of just looks at it that way. So Typically, when you look at this, you see like a really straight line, but you can see that there's some people that are kind of, or Pokemon in this case, flopping out. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, we can also look at violin. It looks pretty cool. No joke. Violin's pretty awesome. Boop. Yeah, I like it. Uh, but that's certainly what you can do. Don't worry too much about understanding what these do. You're most likely not expected to kind of know what they do at this level but it's generally just showing you where like the bulk of all the numbers are and then kind of like as you can see the outliers just going up and it looks kind of like a violin, I guess. I don't know. Might be going crazy. And that's generally how you kind of mess around with descriptives. These are all your functions and things you can do. Uh, is there any questions about that? Going, 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 and gone. Fantastic. So, and of course, you can mess around with this as much as you want. You have the Pokemon data. So, 
what I believe is someone told me with the Pokemon data that it is accurate. So if you want to find out which Pokemon gives you the best stats, go ahead, go crazy, figure it out. That'd be amazing. Uh, but yeah, you can look at other things like attack and HP if we were kind of curious to see what was going on. Now, as you keep adding more, it does take a little bit to kind of get going, but you can see what's not. Uh, what we can do, though, is if we close and hide this, we go back to our data view. Now, say, for example, you want to go back to this because you're like, well, man, I don't I forgot to add something or forgot to do something. You can literally just click on it and it brings you back. If you don't want to touch this anymore, you can simply just go back here and start another descriptive. So it just starts another one at the bottom. If you don't want this, you right click. And just click on remove and it will just literally it so you don't have to deal with it uh the references you cannot remove so enjoy that <laughs> they're there <laughs> i mean if you figure out a way to do that please let me know but i like tried to do it once and i was like yeah never again uh so let's move on to t-tests so there's a couple t-tests that is provided to us in jamobi there's the independent sample t-test which is the most useful, I guess, for 2400, because you guys will probably be doing independent sample t-tests. There's pair samples, which is just a fancy word for saying that they're within. So a good example is imagine if I gave you two tests, test A and test B. An independent sample would be if I just gave you test A and compared you to test B scores. A paired sample is if I gave you both tests and then kind of looked at the effect of that. And then one sample is literally just one sample t-test. Don't worry, you will never probably use this in your life unless it's a project or something like that. So let's click on the independent sample t-test because don't really have uh, un the right data to do a paired sample, but we'll do it this way. So it may look a little intimidating at first. That's totally fine. I mean, when I looked at this, I'm like, this looks nothing like SPSS, but that's, that's, that's fine. What we're going to do is go right to the bottom here. And you can see this is where I sometimes if you assign them as ID, they don't show up. They're you're hidden. And so that's why if you have uh, participation ID, just do that and you'll never have to deal with it again. Uh, we can click on captive, move, oops, not, not there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Move that to the grouping variable because there's two groups, remember? There was the captive and wild Pokemon. And now we just need a dependent variable. Uh, for us... Uh, we we did defense last time. Let's do overall attack power. Let's see which which Pokemon provides us with what. And is there a difference? No, there isn't. So as we know, the p value is a big indicator of if something is significant, meaning that we can reject the null. Um, but we'll get a little bit more into why there maybe isn't, right? So we're seeing this uh, when we use Dermovi, it does give us the standard students t. That's what's going to be used. Uh, on the left side here is tests. Uh, the only one you need to click on, and it's already clicked on, is students T. These ones here uh, should not be used unless you're running a non-parametric uh, analysis. Uh, in simpleton, in simple talk, sorry, simpleton, simple talk, uh, you generally won't do this unless your distribution is not normal. But for reasons, we're going to just not worry about that because you'll most likely be fine. Uh, the, the Pokemon data is just very, very like all over the place, as you saw. <laughs> so well, we can look at different things. We can look at mean differences. So we can click on this, and we can get the conference interval for that. Standard error differences. We can get effect sizes, so our Cohen's T, which is complete garbage. Uh, we can also look at descriptives, if we're that's what we're kind of maybe more likely to look at. And so as we know with T, t-test is comparing the means, right? And so we can see here that there's not that much of a difference. So we can accept that. You can do descriptive plots. I'm a big fan of the plots. I think they always look cool. So we can see where the mean is. Uh, we can also see where the median is. And kind of like, yeah, it's just pretty simple. You can see that there's a huge overlap. So there's not a whole lot. And just one second, the sun is blinding me. <laughs> OK, uh, and then hypotheses. So this is where you can kind of choose. Thanks. Uh, this is where you can either choose to kind of do one tail or two tail. Uh, if the data shows that you should do one tail, meaning that uh, um, what's a good example of a one tail? Ice cream and uh, feeling good. 
if you assume that ice cream makes people feel good and there's data supporting that, and I don't think there is data, but just go with me here, then you would most likely say, well, we expect there to be a positive correlate, like a positive effect uh, going forward, right? But if you don't, you just keep it as is. And this is the basics of like group one does not equal group two. Uh, don't worry about missing uh, values. It's kind of works on itself. Uh, assumption checks. So these become very popular and not popular. They become essential later on when you kind of get more into stats classes. But as some of us may remember from Arlie's teaching is homogeneity. So I believe that's Levine's test uh, right there. Yep. So Levine's test. Um, it's not significant, which is good. It even tells us a little bit. A low p a uh, low p value suggests is a violation, so it's good. Norm normality, we can kind of look at it and see like, oh, normality is fine. That's good. And then we can finally look at the QQ plots. Again, I like them. I think they look cool. They're so yeah, and it looks pretty good compared to some of the other uh, hot garbage data we've had so far. Uh, but generally, this is how you run an independent sample t test. So just to kind of recap, what you're going to do is you're going to drag your value, your dependent variable over here. These kind of give you the insight of what needs to be used. So obviously it has to be a continuous variable, which makes sense. This here can be ordinal or uh, categorical as we have with captive, captive or wild. And then we can select useful tools to kind of get a little bit extra information, meaning effect sizes, which is required descriptives of what's going on, homogeneity, normality, all those kind of stuff. That's kind of, that's a sample, independent sample t-test. Pretty straightforward, right to the punch. Is there any questions about that? I'm just going to give you guys about a minute or so. One thing I'd like to point out is that, as you can see here, once you understand how to set up your data, running the tests are pretty straightforward. If you follow what it's telling you, it just kind of goes. And you'll find out in a second here how ANOVAs are very simple. Repeated ANOVAs, that is a little bit messier. So hopefully you're not running any of those. But if you are, uh, I'm not going to go over them today because they are they would take about 30 minutes to explain how to do it. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to ANOVAs. Now, as I said previously, to run ANOVAs, uh, we need to kind of mess with our data a little bit, and that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on data. We're going to click on filters. So the little thing that looks like coffee, I guess, coffee filters. I don't know. I've been told. And it gonna, it's going to give us this. Now, this is going to look very intimidating because you have to start writing code here. And this is the little bit of code I said would come because this is when it's going to require it. So what we need to do is I'm interested in looking at, and we're going to move it over here, the types of Pokemon. So type one. I want to look at different things with certain types. Now, I think there's over like 14. I don't want to run all 14 in ANOVA. It's going to be very messy. So there's three of them that I'm very interested in. I'm interested in fire, water, and rock. Kind of the simple three, what we're going to work with. But it's really difficult to kind of get that without removing some things we don't want. So how do we do that? Well, here comes the code part. So follow along, and I'll try to go slow. Um, so if you want to isolate something from a group, you need to select that variable. So for ourselves, we're going to put in type. I'm going to move this out of the way. Type. And of course, you have to spell it word for word. You can't like accidentally mess up. You have to spell it word for word. So type, period, capital I. And you got to put two equal signs here. And then in quotation marks, we need to put water. Close the quotation marks. Now, if we do this, and we're going to just run it quickly, you can see that it filters it, meaning that everything, let's see if we can go over there, everything that is water is being filtered out. Everything that's not water is being filtered out, sorry. <coughs> so, that's good, but we need two more. So what do we do, right? Well, we continue adding on to this code. So R kind of uses other things, but for Jamovi, you just simply put in OR. So just put in OR. You don't need to capitalize it. You don't need to do anything. OR, space, and we just repeat the formula once again. So we put in type. I'm going to move this out of the way. Period. Capital I. Equal, equal. Uh, and then we just put quotation mark, 
and let's do fire close quotation marks so once again push enter and you can see here that new things are popping up so we got oh we got charmander charizard so you can see now fire has been accounted so what do we do when it's the last one well we do the same thing right so we would do man i really wish this was in person but or and then we would go type once again period i equal equal raw oh i guess i can show you guys this is what happens when you don't put in the uh, quotation marks it just freaks the hell out so i think you can also do single quotation marks might work i'm not really sure i always do quotation marks because that's the way it should be but let's see if i if it did that it's a learning experience guys no, it doesn't look well. Yeah, I guess you can do single quotation or quotation marks. I'm a nerd for quotation marks, so I'm going to stay with that. And so now what you've just noticed is we just typed in our first code to allow us to weed out some uh, data we don't want to use currently. Um, it should be known that it will get pretty long the more groups you have. So if we wanted to do five or six, we'd have to keep repeating this formula over and over again. But that's generally how it is. And of course, when we close this, what you can see on the top left here, or I guess one of the variables is no filter. So it's just kind of stuck there. Uh, what you can do is you can click this little hide button, hide filter, if you want, or you can just unclick it. So that's how you kind of create very, that's how you kind of single out variables you want to use within that variable or data within that variable, sorry. Um, there is some other things we'll use quickly here just to kind of get the things going. Uh, you can activate it and deactivate it anytime you want. So if you just click on this, everyone's back and no one's a party pooper. Uh, we can also click on add new filter, what we're going to do. Now, sometimes what's really annoying is you want to find outliers. We definitely had some for defense, things like that. So we're kind of curious on exactly what's going on and what we should do. So we need to figure out a way to kind of get rid of them. And a good way to find outliers, uh, SPSS, you know, sometimes has an outlier button. This hasn't been in, uh, it's not in Jamovi. So for us to kind of remove data, we're going to have to probably look at the Z scores, right? So, excuse me. So we're going to do another line of code to kind of single out anyone that's above extreme point. So what that means is we're going to hit negative two. And we're going to say less than and we're going to say Z score. And we're going to say defense. I think that's less than two. So what's going to happen here when we push enter is it's going to filter out anything that's extreme. So we go, we go. So you can see one right here that's really extreme. And all this is basically doing is telling you that anything between these two numbers are acceptable. Anything outside those numbers are not. So we can kind of do it that way. Uh, if you want to figure out which ones are the extreme ones, so instead of like, as we can see here, we're kind of going, okay, which ones are my outliers? Because maybe you want to port on these outliers because maybe they're really extreme. It kind of takes a little bit and you're like, okay, there's an X, there's an X. There's another way you can do this. So let's deactivate this. Um, what I will say is you cannot do this option. You can't flip it saying, oh, anything greater than this, than this. The code doesn't work. It doesn't legit, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't like it. So we're going to keep it that way, but we're going to have to add another set of codes. And I'm, I'm sorry, this will be the last one, I promise. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit capital Z, bracket, def, def, I guess, or defense, comma. We're going to say gray or less than negative two, which makes sense, right? Anything less than negative two, so negative 2.1, things like that. And then we click or, and this is where or comes in. We do Z, we do repeat the same thing, greater than two. If we do that, it throws everyone out, but what we can do is we can then, you, find those guys that are really high score. So we can see here that Golem, uh, and not from Lord of the Rings, but this rock dude uh, has a lot of defense. So we can just keep going through and we can see all these guys that are like sticking out. 
Onyx, yeah. Look at that guy, Onyx. Yeah, 160. So yeah, this kind of shows us a little bit about how to kind of look for those. If you're not interested in that, but you're more interested in taking out outliers, but again, be a little bit careful. You just do this formula. So feel free to write them down if you want, because uh, you'll most likely be using these a whole lot to kind of filter out stuff. Um, things like that. You can also, if you're interested, and okay, there's one more. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm lying. There's one more we can uh, talk about. We can put in row space. I think there's a space. No, I don't think there's a space. Uh, uh, I think nine. Function nine. Hmm. I'll figure that out later. I must have put in the wrong code. That function does work. Oh, well, let's not worry about that then. I made a boo-boo. Uh, but generally, these are the ones you should be worrying about if you need to isolate any of those unwanted things. So what we're going to do is we're going to reactivate this. We can delete these ones if we want. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to click on Analyze. We're going to click on Nova. So there's a few things we can do here. Uh, this also tells you that it's non-parametric, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, Mancova, Ancova, and repeated measures, we aren't going to worry about right now. And by right now, I mean today. Uh, but there is one-way ANOVA and ANOVA. So let's click on a one-way ANOVA. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be the same thing we're kind of used to. So if we go down to our grouping variable, which would be our type 1, because we've adjusted for that now. I'm going to click on here. And then our dependent variable, which can be anything we really want. We can do attack this time. And it's just a one-way ANOVA. And you can see here that it kind of gives us, well, it's not significant, but there's some stuff going on here. Um, this just allows you to switch it if, you're, um, if your variance isn't equal. And you can get that by homogeneity and, and QQ plot. So while these load up here, you can see that Everything's fine, so it, we can assume that they're equal, but we'll just leave it as is. We can do descriptive tables just to kind of see what's going on here. So you can see fire, 20, means, they're all, well, except water. Water kind of got screwed over there. But there might be a little bit of a difference here, just a little bit, because we can go to post hocs and see exactly where it's going. So we can click on turkey, or not turkey, tukey, sorry. Ah, <laughs> oh, Christmas, so... Oh. Uh, we can click on Tukey, and I see it's getting a little messy with everything I keep opening. And with Tukey, we can kind of see what's kind of going on here. So we got fire and rock, not a whole lot going on, p-values, nothing. And then fire and water, nothing going on. So generally, there's nothing going on for this uh, group with attack, which kind of makes sense. You want to try to make sure all your Pokemon are balanced. That is generally how you do a Nova's. And as I told you before, this is generally what's going to keep happening. It's just, it's a click and go. So we're going to click on a Nova. We're going to go down to a Nova. And we're going to be presented with these. So this one looks slightly different. And there's a lot of things to select from. And that's totally fine. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add our dependent variable. So this time we can do maybe let's do HP. It will accept it. I know I said you should categorize it your measure type to what it should be, but you can put it in anywhere. It just tells you like, hey, make sure this is your dependent variable or it's just not going to work. And then we can go down to our fixed variables, which we can do type one. And we can do, let's say, captive. So you can see here at the bottom right, the ANOVA. So I'm not going to get into too much details, but also we can see that there's not a whole lot going on by themselves, no interaction, nothing. Uh, don't worry too much. We can get effect sizes here. I think that's Omega. Bring the Omega. We can also get my favorite things, normality and homogeneity. So we look at this. Everything looks fine. Get the QQ plot again just to kind of look at it one last time. It's kind of dancing, but other than that, it's, it's kind of fine. Don't worry about this. Post hoc is, again, what we just did in the previous ANOVA. We can bring them over if we're kind of curious. Uh, you can just move them over like this if you want all of them. Do, do, do. And of course, you can select what you want. Uh, we'll select this one also. We can get effect sizes. 
And as you can see, it just really gets messy, but that's that's totally fine. So we can look at type one and we can see just it by itself that there's not a whole lot going on. Nothing, no differences really. Go down to captive, not a whole lot going on either. And that's fine. And we can also remove these if they're just kind of making it way too crazy for us. And then you can see the interaction between this. And this is where it starts to get really messy. Um, those people in honors, like whatever you're running, man, <laughs> like if you're running a Nova, good luck. Uh, but generally, this is what it looked like. So fire types and captive and then comparing them to other stuff. It's pretty straightforward with regards to putting it in, analyzing it. As you can see here, it's just a hot mess. But don't worry about interpreting it. That's why you would either have a supervisor or someone to help you with it. But I'm just showing you this is exactly how you kind of set up a simple ANOVA. And of course, in future workshops, we can talk more about setting up other things. But that's generally that. I know that was a lot of information for Jamovi or for the ANOVA, sorry. Is there any questions, any confusion that needs to be clarified? Just going to wait a minute or two. I feel like you guys are so smart. This is fantastic. Uh, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on filter. Uh, you can also open a new filter if you want. Uh, we can just deactivate it. We don't need it right now. We can just hide it. It could be out of my face. It's fine. Because um, we need all our data back to run the regression. And by regression, I mean we're going to run the correlation matrix. So there's different things here. Don't worry about any of these. We're going to just worry about correlation matrix. So you're going to click on that. And move this over a little bit. And you can also adjust this, by the way, too, if you want. Not if it wants to work for me. Oh, what the hell? I guess that's what happens when it runs. Oh, oh that's because we turned the filter off. That's it. Ha, that's a nightmare. That's why we don't turn the filter off sometimes. Just uh, analyze, just remove this. Sorry about that. I totally forgot when you turn the filters off. All hell breaks loose. So make sure you know what you're doing before that happens. OK, let's click on co correlation matrix. Uh, and it's as simple as it sounds. We're just going to throw a bunch of dependent variables in there, or continuous variables. So why don't we just throw in overall attack power and overall defense? And just kind of see what happens here. So we get a um, kind of an OK uh, R here. And uh, the p-value is pretty good. It's pretty significant. Um, generally, that's what's going to happen. You can add some other things. Not generally find significance, but when you put together, you're going to just see this. We can throw other ones in there, too. We can throw in defense, We can, which is going to be weird because we have the average, but that's fine. We can throw in special attack. As you can see, as you add more, you can kind of see what's going on, just as everything is like becoming significant. Uh, Work to the wise, don't throw everything in there like it's, I don't know, a holiday and you're just throwing everything into a bag. Just do with the ones you want to use. So we're just going to remove these two because we don't really need them. We can also plot it as we're very familiar. Again, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just click on the correlation matrix. No, uh, we're just going to open this up and you can see here that it kind of shows you where all your variables are kind of over the place. Well, for here, it's all over the place. Sometimes you get them really nice and they're on the line, but Pokemon, man, it's a nightmare sometimes with data. And that's what you're going to get with the plots. We can open the density for variables. It takes a little bit and it kind of shows you what's going on, which looks pretty nice. So overall defense, overall attack, and it kind of looks good. Uh, and then statistics, it just kind of shows you the what you just got above, so 419. That is how you set up a quick correlations uh, test. Uh, I'm not going to get into the other ones because I'm almost out of time here. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, hopefully it was informative and um, kind of gets you to use Jamovi over SPSS. There is some benefits using SPSS over Jamovi. Uh, for example, the one-way ANOVA doesn't give you effect sizes, but on SPSS it does. They might fix that eventually, but that is a pain in the butt right now. Um, and it kind of gives you a little bit more stuff to work with, 
But the thing I, again, like about Jamovi is it works with you. You can go back and check your data, and you can also do modules to kind of add more onto it. So yeah, that's it. Is there any questions? If not, you guys can enjoy the sunny day now. Does anyone have any questions before we go? Okay, okay so... so Thank you so much, Brandon, for the informative lecture. Uh, um, if anyone is receiving bonus credit for this event, uh, please message me or anyone else in the KPS so that we can record your information. Um, I'd also like to draw your attention to the event survey in the chat window. Uh, we'd appreciate if anyone would be willing to fill it out. Um, yeah, and hope everyone has a great day. Obviously, Mewtwo, what does that even mean? Oh, the best Pokemon? No, Me Too's not the best. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was I was going to point out, you, you mentioned trying to find the strongest Pokemon, and in that list that you provided, it is obviously Me Too, because Me Too has the highest stats of all of them. Does it? I didn't, I didn't really pay attention. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, if you want to see my inner Pokemon node, Me Too has a total, well, the original Mewtwo has a total stat count of 680, while probably the Pokemon that comes closest would be uh, Ho-Oh Lugia, but they're only at 600, so. Has a high special attack. Ooh, awesome. Well, anyways, thanks, guys. This has been fun. Oh, really fun, too. You did a good job. Oh, awesome. Don't I will. forget to stop recording. <laughs> oh, the recording. Oh, wait. Is it still recording? Hey guys, it's okay. We're talking about Pokemon. Feel free to email me if you're curious about Pokemon too. <laughs> it's fine. I'll uh, I'll let Sydney know to stop recording. Oh yeah, is she even in the group still? Hopefully she can edit this out. I'm gonna leave now. Well, she, we we can't we can't edit this out. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, anyways, guys, I'm gonna let you go. I got stuff to do. All Thank right, you so okay. much, guys. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye bye. bye.